what's up YouTube this is another episode of Martin day trades um, I'm going over um, a video here guys about how to I'm actually just gonna bring this this way um, so today guys I'm gonna be giving you guys some tips on how to see liquidity or um, stop loss hunts if you guys don't know what that is it's a good way of thinking of the opposite trade mindset so let's say for example um, this move happened right guys you see this move happened that means there's a lot of like right here right here that means there's areas of targets where prices is gonna need to pull back too so people are going short like right here people are going short right here right here and even right here so what that means is eventually price is going to need to go retest and then asian and london dump but at this moment this is when price started wanting to go take this sell sell side liquidity meaning there's there's stop losses right there people stop losses either they're break even or they they were trailing or something right so what we can visually see here is targets what you what you got to look for are targets so if you're buying down here let's say the new york open where's your target and price had fallen down this much right here we want to entry and you know normally you want to take the previous day high is you don't want to ever get too greedy this came up and made equal essentially almost took these this liquidity from the sell side here but then i had another uh move down so people who didn't scale out you know and then all of a sudden the buyers came back in i'm trying to telling a story guys this is what it is to tell a story so we can see here that asia bought it up london bought it up and then what we can assume is that's going to be a london continuation and it might have chopped some people up here but at about one o'clock that was the buy and it hasn't come back since and it then took this liquidity down here right here this liquidity the stop loss hunts essentially and uh now it came up to these highs which it took out so there is this high right here at 11 962 so if you were targeting 12,000 you know that would have been a safe a safe spot you know because because the big figure levels is right there and normally price likes to target a big figure level so you see these areas you do your targets you look to the you look to the left here and you see where can there be targets now because now i'm bullish i'm waiting for pullbacks to get in for bullish buys so that's one area this is another area and this is another area these equal highs like right here so and you can see this one almost lines up at the 800 big figure level. So there's these these levels here where price is going to want to target. And I did a Fibonacci retracement from this point to this point. So you can see where price will want to target. So but but with that being said, guys, price can always react and do what it's what it's going to do. To me, this looks extended now. You know, it, it may need a pullback before it goes higher. And where could that be? And we don't really know until how London reacts. Or, or Asia and London uh, after Sunday during Sunday so we're gonna do a normal Fibonacci retracement tool and it looks like there's some areas down here I'm gonna delete this um, see if there's anything very uh, visible that lines up with this fib um, last down candle before the move up um, can see there was a lot of orders right here and right here so let's daily maybe can't really produce anything there all i know is i see a couple of areas where price could target their order blocks so let's see if there's a 30 minute order block no it would have to be the hour it's the last down candle before the move up so I see one right here. This is the last down candle before the move up, which lines up with the 50. And I'm actually not going to use that. I'm just going to use it as the, um, I don't 
don't I don't want to call it anything. I just need to highlight uh blah 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 blah. I may just use the um using session range one and fix up my um templates later. Then we can also see here guys that there was this expansion and then this move down, this whole move down, I would say it's fifty percent of this down here lines up right there. I wouldn't do the whole thing guys. Uh normally you want to target the lower half. So over a couple of days, depending on how price starts to trade, we're gonna be bullish. We're not gonna look for any sell uh sell scenarios. Um you can also do it from this point because it had this move and then the retracement and then it had this move, the retracement, and then this move. So we could even actually move it here to here. Okay. So we're going to do this most recent action right here. And I'm showing you guys where now. Okay. So this move happened, guys. So all of this right here means there is liquidity down there. So you can see the liquidity by, I mean, to follow my cursor, there's, there's some down here. There's some down here. There's some down here, and there's some down right here. So that means if price is going to come down, when we do a tool here, guys, a short position, let's just say we get in and it comes back up. So we're entering at like the 12,000 after it trades, and whenever that happens, like more down here, we know where our stop loss is. It's probably going to be a 50-point stop. Wherever that is, we'll see how it trades off. But then we can start having these targets. So... If you see the little uh, crosshairs that's like where my cursor is and look to the left, you can see that this would be a good risk to reward right here, a one to f essentially three and a half because there's liquidity down here. So you could target close to that or right at the bottom of it. So 800 to me is a big figure level. That means I would probably all most out right here, but then let it ride because there's some liquidity down here and just and you know we don't know how far price is going to go it may target this look this liquidity right here so that and the previous day low so that might turn into a one to six depending on entry um i don't think it'll go lower than that so and if it does it, it'll probably target this area right here uh, a one to seven depending on where the entry is now it may turn into something like this because asia and london may do something so it might turn into like a yeah, let's go from let's say here. Eight hundred, twelve hundred. I don't know, guys, because we I haven't been there yet. But this is what it means to take the liquidity, have targets, because there's a liquidity. So you're where you when you set a target, you're you're looking for liquidity grabs. So there's this move we're entered. We see the the, the play right. It comes out. Let's say it's a short. We can. We know that there's liquidity in this area, just so how there was liquidity in this area. Now the price is going up to take it. Um, it may do little, we're just trying to get short term moves, but let me just kind of go show you guys other areas where it had to grab liquidity. So right here, there's this whole move, event, essentially this whole move, right? You guys can see that. So there's liquidity above these right here, and I'll just kind of point them out to you guys like this. So this is almost equal highs. I'll say that's like right there. There's some liquidity down here. These are bigger areas. So those are going to be when we're if we're being bullish and we're looking to take targets, we're going to be targeting these prices right here. You guys can see that, and then we can kind of correlate it to the big figure levels later on. Yeah, and then I have these right here. Um, okay, so yeah, and then if you do it a little bit even more, you can see there's even more areas, and this can actually extend this. And you can see that. Um, yeah, those are going to be areas where price, if it's um, bullish, is going to want to start gravitating towards, and we're just going to be looking for pullbacks. 
to get in for these longs, daily longs. There's going to be more longs than, than, than sells. So right now, we're just checking to see how the mark this, this, this created a lower low. Lower low. Took these out. Market structure says that this right here needs to break over these highs for it to become can be considered bullish. It's a break. It's a market structure change. A market structure. So, but for right now, we know it needs to. There's this liquidity area up in this area right here. And that's why it's been so bullish because it had its move, and now it's like it can't go down forever, right? Just so it needs to have pullbacks, and that's why day traders are always setting targets. Because we, we're waiting, you know, there's liquidity, people have stop losses, there's, you know, these these areas of dark pools, sometimes people call them, there's just these areas up in here, and then eventually this will go up, and then there'll be liquidity down here for a sell side, and then, and then you know, the Elliott waves continue. So, let's kind of just go to a weekly and see how we can observe this on a weekly, right? So we have targets down here, here, which price went to here, 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 and on on this expansion after expansion after COVID, you know we had we had this area, and guess what? All of this down here is liquidity. Z and there's peoples and guess and and with that being said. That means there's people in the market and they are in long positions. So that means there needs to be a pullback to take some of these people's um, positions if they sell it at a l lower rate, right? So what we're targeting is we're targeting the stop losses or positions of the opposite side of the trade. There are people, okay. So I'm going to just kind of move that to the side. So liquidity or there are people in the market. So right here, there's people in the market and they're getting into longs. And then knowing that as soon as price got up here, people started, you know, taking profit in their longs and then traders who do who don't have positions but day trade and can put in for shorts started really you know the sellers were taking over especially in this area right here right in that area so what we can do is say hey that's a target in itself and put this out and have a bearish order block um so we see here now that this week's candle uh, was bigger than last week's candle, but that's so it was it here. So we just gotta kind of wait and see how price starts to trade. And what we're doing is we're taking one two percent, uh, two two three percent a day, one two one to three percent a day, and letting runners run because there's targets. There's always gonna be targets, and most traders are risking one percent for two percent or three percent. So um, we're looking for a hundred to hundred fifty points a day. Anything more than that is a blessing. And the way to target those areas are just looking for areas of liquidity um, meaning look to the left look to the right or look to the left and see where those points can be so you know now that happened and then so this move happened so this move happened right here and took this liquidity targeted down close to here came back up took the liquidity from up here moved down see how and then there's this low right here but this took it out if you look at my thing it's like right equal lows then at these equal lows there was a reaction price came up but couldn't break higher than this so that so created a doji and then all of a sudden sell side came pressured on boom this happened and took out this low right here move up and then the down move this low took almost all of this so yes guys i think there's actually 
a little bit more room to come down from this move. We can measure that with the Fibonacci retracement tool. And you can see that price went to the 50% and it's starting to reject a lot. Unless there's some really good news, guys, and I don't know because I know that America came out with their fucking abortion abortion bans and a lot of Ukraine, and, you know, they're stacking up the negative news, right? So I still think that the markets are going to be bearish. And since this is all manipulated, I feel like it's going to come down to the 50% of this bearish order block. And we can measure that with another Fibonacci tool, guys. I still got to make another tips and tutorials with my trade review so I can show you guys how to do this. So what we're going to do is measure the bottom. It's about right here. Eh, what, like right there. And what I'm going to do is change the template to my 50% one. And it, you can see where price may fall into. And there's the 79%. It's the 809. And then there's this 50% uh, of this order block. And we can actually see if a monthly gives us a cleaner order block on that. Uh, with that being said, uh, and it kind of does, guys. So I'm going to bring, oh, no. Bring this up. Oh, no. Here we go. There it is right there. Last down candle. We'll go to these two right here. So we refined it just a little bit. I'm still going to use the weekly. Um, actually, no, since it, we moved it up a little bit, I'm going to kind of go down to like right here. So you can see that. And then this right here needs to change as well. So you can see that between 9,000 and 8,300, there's a lot of liquidity. Oh, 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 like there's a high area of confluence. There's a high area of confluence. So if it breaks these lows at the 50%, the last hope is the 62%. If this breaks under the 62%, guys, it's going to fall down into this area, and then price will have to rally up again but um as of right now i'm a little bullish because it has all this liquidity up in these areas but who knows it may continue its bearish momentum and then finally start its ascent upwards but right now there's a lot of news and stuff in the market or in the world not looking too healthy so what we're going to do is try to capitalize on um, some of these swings in the market uh, i don't usually use the news the global news to my the, the, the fear, the emotional type of news, the bad news is not very good. It gets people riled up. What I do is I go to this Forex uh, factory. It's not Forex factory. It's the um, My FX book. And if you guys go to Economic Calendar, you can look down here. And there's, uh, there's like the Japanese summary of opinions, the Euro form of central banking, the G7 summits, the industrial profits. So what we can do here is look to the right and see the impact. Now, what's an impact for what you're trading? Now, if you're trading Forex and you're trading the Euro USD, this may be high impact. But for me, that's not very big high impact. Yeah, it's central banking. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for United States. And this is on Monday. And it looks like when the news comes out, uh, we can see if it's good or bad and then have a buy is like as an extra confluence to the technicals how about that and then it's this is high news high news high news durable goods orders durable good orders and uh, uh, defense and then uh transport and then they have the non-defense goods orders uh, that's you know i i do manufacturing guys so um they're talking about aero uh manufacturing parts and stuff like that how they do their thing but they also have a lot of um other impact news for united states on monday and it could, they tell you these at, at certain times 5 30 eastern standard time so let's see if there's anything that lines up with 9 30 8 30 an hour before there's nothing really at 9 30 uh on monday but you, you if someone wants to really like be meticulous and start journaling or figuring out how to use this they can do that but let me get back on topic guys we're already uh 20 minutes in so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna let you guys go now at this point you guys know where what liquidity is it's the areas where stop losses are there's there, where there's people entering the markets it's there's liquidity there 
So there's people going entering the markets for these sales. So there's liquidity up there eventually. So you're trying to wait to get in for a buy to go up. And these are long day, these are long term swing trades because of the weekly. But if you can catch these moves intraday on the 30 minute too, guys, or any any particular, you know, you can zoom in, and you know we have these these targets now. Boom, boom, boom. So we're not taking big moves. 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, thousand, 2,000, 3,000 pip moves. We're looking for the typical 100 well, 70 to 150 pip move a day which happens and then if a bigger move happens that's just a uh, apple on the top so guys this is martin day trades please like comment subscribe um i'm taking this journey on and um i'd like for you guys to kind of bypass the um trial and error from when i started uh, please do not build bad trading habits guys it's very hard to break, break a habit I, I read a lot of books and i had to read a lot of books starting to trade because i needed to learn about my mind and honestly guys if you start something and you start getting an emotional attachment to bad trading that's gonna that's gonna prolong your 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 learning curve because now you're you're not trading how it looks like to trade professionally um, the next thing is, guys, you have to be not take trading tr as day traders. We're not tr we're not trying to stay at the market all day uh, looking at charts. Our goal as day traders is to make it the most of money, the, as much money as we can in the short amount of time as possible, shortest amount as possible time as we can. It, we're, we're in and we're out, we're at hour to two hours max. So that's where a majority of the move is because that's all day traders mindsets is just to get in get out take your pips and get on but the thing is you cannot make trading your your life because once you make trading your life you're gonna and you're looking at the charts all day is what i mean you're gonna you have to bypass that fomo of wanting to enter because the move happens at a specific time in the day and if you're on the wrong side of a trade you have to just say hey i took my l i went up for the layup I went up for the shot and I missed it. Negative one. So uh, I'm very hard headed. I know Andre takes 1.5% trades and I'm going to trade just like Andre because he's profitable. So the thing is, he's learned how not to take trades every day. And when he does, it's it, it's 30, 40 pips max now, guys, because you got to have the least amount of risk per trade with the most max potential. And I'm getting to a point where I, I'm starting to see where his stop loss pay placements are, which is very good, guys. Um, minimize the risk that we're, I'm putting on and surviving longer in the markets with a demo account. And there's been a couple times where I've actually made the FTMO requirements trading in demo. Um, so, but every time I go into the FTMO challenge, I end up always going past the negative 10%. I'll last two weeks, I'll last three weeks, and then all of a sudden... Um, I don't know where my losses are coming from. Maybe I'm over trading and I'm, I'll have a good week, but then I I take a loss on Friday that's negative 4% and that gets gets rid of my 2 3% that I gained and lost it all when I could have lost 0.5 to 1%. Still been up. So my mentor Andre is up 50% for the month and I think he still has a couple of days in this week or in this month range. So he has until Monday to Thursday to stack up his wins. I'm thinking this motherfucker is going to have 60% because he's averaging almost 10% a week. So he'll make $60,000 this month, guys, uh, just by following the rules. That's the thing, guys. I have a really good mentor who fucking did this on his own, uh, had a mentorship with ICT. You can follow ICT on um, YouTube and my, my mentor, Andre Diaz, FBA Capital. You can follow FBA Capital on YouTube. He he had the best one of the best mentors that been in the game for 40 years, so he learned how to kind of trade a little differently. I started trading uh, crypto with my cousin Miguel, taught me some bad trading habits, went into forex, then I went into trading momentum, penny stocks with Warrior Trading, and that was a whole different. There's no way he there's if you're not a disciplined trader before trading momentum stocks, I would not advise someone to go learn how to trade momentum stocks through warrior trading because he's just going to mess with your emotions there's not really ever a real trade plan because he trades level two the way he trades is he knows where to look where areas of liquidity targets everything and then he rides the momentum for that impulse 
and catches those micro pullbacks and he can see where they're buying and selling on the level two which i know how to do now guys but for for someone who doesn't know how to set targets and know how to manage their position sizing position sizing is very important and the risk to reward guys you guys know this um there's no way that someone's going to do good with that until they learn how to correctly position size manage emotions and manage the trade and understand that you only get one chance a day guys and if you make a bad decision you can destroy everything that you've earned in one decision so you so so a day trader needs to m wake up every morning and say win or lose i will follow my rules win or lose i will follow my rules and that's what's going to keep someone not losing a lot and if they're not a good trader yet like they're learning they may go past 10 percent but they stayed in the game long that they didn't die in one uh one one trade so you know then they learn how to become a break even trader and then eventually they go from losing trader to break even trader to then hey i can make two three percent a week pretty consistently and then that goes to three to five seven you know and then now and then andre ten percent you know that's most best day traders make like the the best of the best make about 10 to 15 percent a week and so my mentor is one of the best he is the one percent you know he he he's a cool little kid he has the mindset of someone who's a lot older wisdom you know he's he's the type that's like i don't i i, I want to go to the club but i don't want to go to the club and drink i want to go to the club to collect my stacks of bills because i i want to own the the, the club i want to own the bar and i want to just ride around in like a lamborghini or rolls royce and just pick up the dollars you know so that's kind of my mindset too guys with real estate opening up businesses staying healthy guys i like to be on edge you guys can see that i'm very i'm getting muscular i'm taking this journey on i've started working out again so you guys can see that but um yeah guys I'll, i'm gonna actually start another uh folder where i'm gonna talk about my other uh, ventures because um, you guys need to I, I feel like if I can give you guys some knowledge with like real estate I could help you maybe lower taxes or plans for something that you can do with your resources that you have if you got like 40k sitting you know you can only need five thousand five five percent you know if, if you're trying to move and then from there you can strategize how you want to get a uh, rent it out after you know so and I could te show you guys how to create an LLC one day so tap in guys this is martin day trades it's been lovely i showed you guys where the areas of liquidity are stop loss hunts uh when you set your targets make sure you guys have this um tool here and it'll help you with entering and exiting a trade you don't enter until it hits your 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 area you know if, it, if the area is right there you're not entering right here 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 you're here right now boom and if it goes up it goes up but we're we're accounting for this with the risk that we're you know taking on with our stop loss so um I'm martin day trades like comment subscribe follow me on instagram uh, martin.daytrades and have a good day